بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على الكريم محمد وعلى اله الطيبين وصحبه الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you to the brother who introduced me for an overly generous introduction. I'd like to give everyone a history lesson. In 1534, King Henry VIII of England, due to his many quarrels with the Pope over wanting a divorce, decided to create an English form of Christianity with him as the supreme head of that church. Now, in disgust, his former Chancellor, Sir Thomas More, resigned and wanted to preserve his Catholic beliefs. And he didn't advocate rebellion against the king, but he said that he, would, he refused to swear an oath of succession, uh, rejected, which demand that he reject the authority of the Pope and accept the annulment of Henry's marriage, which is contrary to uh, Catholic beliefs. Henry had him executed for treason. Now, although King Henry didn't interfere and repress the Catholics for their form of spiritual worship, he insisted that all his subjects denounce the authority of the Pope. And Sir Thomas More said at his trial that he was an obedient servant of the king, that he wasn't a rebellious subject, but he could never ever go against his beliefs, and that he, although he was a servant of the king, he was a servant of God first. And of course, that wasn't good enough for King Henry. So even though Henry did change uh, the, the way Catholics or, or the, his subjects worship and the doctrines of the beliefs, he did interfere with those things, he did ask them to denounce a doctrine within, them, within their belief, which would render them non-Catholics, render, render them not Catholic anymore. Could anyone say that Henry was tolerant towards Catholics? He didn't ask people to change their doctrine, their, their spiritual beliefs. He just asked them to change the part of their belief to do with politics or the political aspect. In essence, Henry outlawed Catholicism. 480 years later, it seems uh, Britain hasn't really changed much its policies towards uh, various religions. Muslims believe as a fundamental part of, of their deen that the law of God, which is called the, the Sharia, and the Caliphate, which is the institution that implements the Sharia, is part and parcel of Islam. The Sharia has its own understanding of human rights and equality and the rule of law, which is of course God's law. We have our own understanding of this. We don't have a liberal uh, or a communist understanding of these things. We have a distinct and unique understanding of these things. Islam obliges Muslims to establish the caliphate, of course, but only in the Muslim world. And to live, for Muslims to live by God's law in justice and mercy. But in the West, Muslims are obliged to respect the laws of the country they live in and be a good example of a Muslim, helping their neighbors, not littering, helping the poor, speaking the truth, helping those in need, uh, not to be annoyance to our brothers and sisters in humanity, the non-Muslims. So these are the things which you know, Muslims are commanded to do, to be uh, obedient to the laws. Of course, I mean, uh, except obviously the laws that command us to do something which is wrong, of course. But to obey the laws and to be um, good citizens, not for, for the sake of being a good citizen, but for the sake of being a good Muslim. However, this is not enough for the secular liberal government of the UK, nor the media, or the intellectuals. UK politicians have openly expressed hostility to, to uh, the Muslim world uniting under a caliphate. The European Court of Human Rights ruled during a case concerning the ban of Turkey's Rafah party that because they advocated Sharia, which was incompatible with democracy, the ban was valid. Muslims, uh, and by the way, Tommy Robinson actually cited that as, as to say that Sharia should be banned in this country. Or at least uh, the, the Muslims um, who believe in or call, call them to believe in Sharia. Muslim speakers have been banned from mentioning the UK. Uh, Muslim UK citizens who are speakers have been banned from speaking at various universities. Uh, some have had their passports confiscated, others have had their citizenship uh, taken away from them, and in, in liberal thought, if your citizenship is taken away from you, uh, that's removal of your rights. Because what's different between a citizen and a non-citizen, the citizen has certain, is entitled to certain rights. So when you're stripped of your citizenship, it basically means that they'll strip you of the rights and protections that they, they uh, promise to give every citizen. 
UK Muslims have been renditioned to American supported torture facilities with the compliance of the UK. Uh, Muslims have been sent to, to prison in the UK or fined for expressing political opinions not linked to violence uh, or terrorism, but of a political nature or a, or a moral nature. Now, David Cameron uses the excuse of the murder of Lee Rigby to implement his muscular liberalism and officially declare the Islamic beliefs in the authority of the caliphate, uh, Muslim unity, and the rule of the Sharia as extremist ideas that should be suppressed with various measures including, but not limited to, internet censorship, sounds like China, and uh, an anti-extremist anti version of Asbos, where they can ban you to go, from, to go to mosques, to go to universities and so on, a restraining order. The, the British government then funds uh, groups like the ironically titled Quilling Foundation to produce a British version of Islam. If Sir Thomas More were alive today, uh, he would be having a sense of deja vu. Um, I say ironic because the, the person who was named, who was named after the Quilliam, uh, he was basically, uh, around the time of World War I, he supported the Ottoman Caliphate and told Muslims they should join the Ottoman armies and defend against the UK. I don't know why the Queen Foundation would call themselves like the, that name. It's like the KKK forming a group and calling themselves the Malcolm X Foundation. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, isn't it ironic they tell us that a secular country does not, uh, uh, you know, it's not based on religion, it's, de it's detached from religion, and therefore everyone in the secular country is free and protected from having authorities meddle in their religion and interfere with their beliefs. But isn't it ironic that basically almost you know, virtually most secular countries around the world get involved, interfere, and dictate the religious doctrines and creeds of their people by various policies ranging from uh, you know, banning or making something illegal to using media pressure or social pressure or just um, or, or various uh, means in between. And this is the this is the issue. Secular secularism has never been tolerant of religion. Any religion that has political aspects. It was not tolerant of the Catholics until the Catholic Church gave up on, on, on any political project. Then Catholics were tolerated. Um, you know, uh, during the last century, you know, Jews were suspected of having a, a political agenda within the West, and that's why they became persecuted. Of course, uh, you know, because they were, didn't have a political agenda, it's viewed that, that you know, the views of people that believe that are just fascists. We, and rightly so. But the thing was that the people who were the fascists were secular, and they invoked secular reasons for why uh, you know, they can trust this minority religion that dresses different and has different customs and different beliefs. And likewise, now we, we're next in turn, because Islam has uh, political aspects to it, of course. And this is nothing new. This is nothing which uh, is just modern day politicians or some strange king in the past implemented. This has been throughout uh, the, the, the thinking of the greatest political philosophers in the West, the greatest liberal and secular philosophers, the founders of liberalism and secularism, they, they talked about intolerance. They said, issue, there are times you can be intolerant. Uh, Thomas Hobbes, who founded secularism, said you can be, the, the, the ruler can interfere with the doctrines of uh, various minorities and force them to do certain things for the public good or in the public interest. John Locke, the uh, the prophet of liberalism, who, who founded it, you could say, um, he said, he actually said that you, could, you can't tolerate uh, Catholics or Muslims. Because, he said about Muslims, he says that because Muslims at the time there was a caliph, because they, they, they have obedience to this caliph, you can't trust them to have obedience to the secular government. Alright? But I don't think things have changed much since then. Um, John Milton, famous for his great essays on uh, freedom of speech, um, also said that you can't uh, tolerate uh, Catholics and also connected Islam to being like Catholicism as well. And he, these, are the, these are the founders of, of who discussed you know, the idea of free speech, basically. Like, when people talk about free speech, they, the first thing they go to is these guys. And of course, the, many of the American founding fathers, John Adams and John Jay, also discussed um, limitations and intolerances against Catholics. This is nothing new. This is nothing new. And the problem because is, it's because religious values, they view it as a threat 
to the, the secular values which underpin the state, which underpin the government. And that's why they just can't tolerate people. Islam, we had Christians, Jews, Zoroastrians, Hindus, all living amongst us, all having their own different belief systems, their different law systems. We tolerated it. We gave them their own autonomous areas to, to live under their own you know, law systems, their own law courts. But the West can't do that. The Islamic system, Islamic history is more tolerant than modern day Western uh, society. I mean, just look at this. Uh, uh, this is a, a proof of this. Segregation wasn't the problem. The problem is not segregation, but rather it's recent controversy. Because Eton is segregated, it's not, it's not you know, for women. There are segregated schools, many segregated schools. They're actually apparently I mean, on top, at the top of the league uh, in, uh, in performance. Uh, so there's segregated toilets, segregated sports. But even there was recently in the news that they, they permitted that women who wanted an abortion because they didn't mind the gender of that fetus could, be, could, could go through with it. It's fine. They don't mind that. It's in the, the news. Oh, that's okay because it's a secular reason. It's a secular reason. But recently, in one debate where it was on Channel 4, for example, we talked with, with Jon Snow, and uh, it was mentioned to Jon Snow that, well, look at Eden, it's accelerated. He goes, yes, but not for religious reasons. You see? It's not celebrated, that's not the problem. It's why you want to be celebrated, or for what, for what values. And that's the issue, and that's where the intolerance lies. And, it's, and I'm, not, I'm not now just going to you know, reference old classical you know, philosophers in the West. People might say, oh, well, we've, we've grown up from that. We're not, you know, we don't agree with those views anymore. Well, I mean, you, you see people like, um, you know, modern day philosophers like Rook uh, Kimlicka, who basically was like, uh, one of the main thinkers of multiculturalism, Michael Walzer, Bhikkhu Parekh, all saying that liberal values must be forced on, uh, every, on everyone in society so that they, you know, that they have to live by these ideas um, to, to obviously to create a civil society. So these are the issues that we see. They've always been intolerant. They've never been uh, trusting or accepting or accommodating of people that have, of minorities that have um, you know, uh, political aspects to their beliefs. So what I will say is this, our solution is not to uh, you know, advise the government and say, well, it's not going to be the best policy or, or this, or maybe you, know, uh, you should redefine extremism or have a, have a more precise meaning or different meaning or more generalized meaning. None of that stuff, because the reason why they did it wasn't due, it's not, the, the issue is not a problem of how they frame the policy, it's the reason for that policy. And the only solution for this, brothers and sisters, and I'll end on this, is the, is the same solution which got uh, black people their rights in America, which got um, women the right to vote in the UK, suffragettes who are actually were a terrorist group. I'm not advocating that aspect of them, but I'm advocating the civil disobedience aspect. The peaceful, peaceful civil disobedience, debate, engagement, you know, raising the issue with the media, raising the issue with your neighbours, raising the issue with your, with your uh, local uh, community leaders and taking it out there and being defiant and making a, a united stand to the British government, telling them with one voice, these are our beliefs, don't touch them, we want to live in peace. The only person who's disrupting this peace is you, not us. Jazakallah.